So I'm here with Chris and Jana, and we're gonna to be touring their house here in Georgia, and they have some really unique automations. They're taking industrial sensors and integrating them to their smart home, and they're doing things I've never seen before. So let's go check it out. So what's really cool is out here in front of Chris's house, he has some sensors, like one right here on this horse gate. And what's pretty interesting is that he took this industrial limit sensor that will detect if the gate is closed and he tied it into this Yolink contact sensor. And that communicates all the way back to their kitchen. And the sensor works really well, super good, reliable sensor. And there's also a motion sensor right here on the front of the driveway. That way, if someone's coming in, they'll know that someone's pulling in, which they knew I was coming in long before the dogs did. And of course, you can use these Yolink contact sensors without anything extra attached, like you can see right here on the skate. And if you need good long range sensors, Yolink seems like the way to go. But what's interesting is how Chris and Jenna are automating with these sensors. One of my favorite things about our automation here is the fact that we have these sensors helping us detect whether the gates are open or closed. So for me, we have horses and I really like being able to know whether I forgot and left a gate open or whether we have two gates open so that the horses have a direct path to escape. We get a notification on our phones if there is that direct path out of the barn and just a little bit of extra security, peace of mind. Yeah, keeping track of what gate is open would be difficult and getting notified every time a gate was open or closed would be really annoying. So being notified only if the horses can escape is really smart. So one of the things we wanted to do for the horses out here in Georgia where it gets super hot and super humid was we wanted to have an ability to keep them cool in the summer, especially for my older horses. And so what we did is we put an automation in with our weather station that is measuring the real field temperature with temperature and humidity. And we tied it to the automation to these fans over here in their stalls. So they have free access to these stalls all day, every day. And so when it's hot, the automation will automatically kick in, turn the fans on. And once it cools down for the day, they'll turn off. And the horses have learned it. They they will come in here and they will realize their fans are on and they'll be like, oh, that's where I want to be. And they'll it'll help them stay cool. Uh, we have it controlled through a bond controller since these are not smart fans. And so I'm able to control it through my phone manually if I want to, or it'll just be automatic. So the bond controller is in the shop right next to the stalls. And of course, the lights in there are automated by the contact sensor on the door and motion sensor on the ceiling. And even though all this is pretty far from the house, they have an outdoor Wi-Fi point-to-point -point wireless bridge that works great to keep everything connected out here. So Chris, he's a smart man to set all this stuff up. He has really high spouse approval factor, which is really key to have a successful smart home. We're here in the living room and all the lights and the fan are controlled by this sewn off display right here. And it's really cool because the buttons are nice and big and it's just seems like it's really easy to use. This is just a, basically an Android tablet. It's been rooted and now it runs the Home Assistant app so I can just make a custom dashboard for it, which we did here to make the buttons nice and big. And I have some lighting scenes tied in. I have fan control with a sound off controller that's in the ceiling. It turns on when you walk near, it turns off when you walk away. Now about that RGB light switch. I've never seen one like this before. It would be perfect for an inconspicuous status light. All the smart lights in here are from Wiz and I like these lights for how inexpensive they are. This Wiz bulb in here is used for notifications around the house. So. If it's red, that means the litter box is full. If it's purple, that means the litter box is broken and they need to go fix it. And if it's green, that means the air filter needs to be replaced. So pretty sweet that it's just this cool light right here in the middle that's easy to see, but you know, not too intrusive. They also have tons of sensors all over the house and some I didn't even know existed before visiting. So I'm here in the HVAC room and there's a sensor here that is so unique. I've never seen anything like this before. So you can see it plugged in right here and it has these little tubes. They're plugged into each side of the filter for the HVAC system. And that way when the HVAC filter starts getting clogged with pet hair or anything like that, that pressure on the back part of it will start to change. So when that back pressure changes, you know it's time to change that filter. 
So one of my favorite sensors here in the house is this water flow sensor. And it has this really cool display that's showing you how much water is flowing through and the temperature and all of that. And it's for their main water line. And then there's also a pressure sensor on their main water line as well. So the goal with the flow meter was to see how much water we're using for different activities, washing clothes, washing dishes, things like that. Turned out it was really helpful to help us diagnose leaks. Uh, even a small leak can add up over, over time. And we had a faucet down at the barn a couple months ago that was dripping slowly. We didn't really notice it. And we were able to catch it before it caused any damage. The pressure sensor we originally put in there just to monitor pressure, get an idea of how the house was doing. And it turned out to be really helpful when we learned that we had a malfunctioning pressure regulator on the water main. So that helped us find out it was spiking after certain water consumption and helped us dial that in and replace the part. So here's another flow sensor. Uh, this is tied in with the master shower hot water line. Although I do use this to detect flow, I mostly use this for temperature detection. And I use that data to drive an automation in my, my master bathroom that turns the lights red briefly when the shower's up to temperature. I love this and it's way better than my implementation where I'm just using a timer to change the lights for my hot water. This is so much more advanced. Pressy. I'm jealous. Here on the grill, even though it's just a charcoal grill, I figured why not get more data. Here I have a thermocouple above the charcoal, one on the charcoal below. It's really nice for logging data long-term during like a smoking session when I'm doing some Brussels sprouts, for example. Uh, you run a couple hours, you want to maintain the temperature nice and even, and so I can graph this with Home Assistant. So these thermocouples all tie into a click PLC that's on the back of this grill, and that communicates over Wi-Fi, sends all the data over MQTT to my Home Assistant. These sensors are insane. Oh, and Chris grilled me up some burgers, and they were delicious. If you're wondering how Chris got all these sensors working with his smart home, well, he has a really unique career. I'm a product engineer for Automation Direct. We are an industrial control supplier. Uh, we offer things like PLCs, uh, which are control systems for factories, switches, sensors, things like that, uh, which explains why I have this otherwise unreasonable collection of hardware in my house here. But I'm using this industrial controller here. This is the line that I work with. This is the productivity PLC line. And I'm using this to interface to those flow sensors and pressure sensors that you saw. So those sensors come in over these individual cables here to this device called an IOLink master. This converts that data from those sensors over Ethernet through the switch into my PLC. And then I'm using a programming method called Ladder Logic. And I take the data from those sensors, I pack it into strings and send it over MQTT to my home assistant right here. And this is what then takes all that data, puts it all together. All right, so if that was a little too technical for you, it's okay, let me explain it really simply. So all those sensors come in through this line and it's converted over to Ethernet. And that is wired all the way over into this little mini computer. And that translates all the stuff, the data to Home Assistant, where it's able to be pulled in to the smart home. Another really useful automation here in the garage is on the mornings of school days, when that door to the house opens up to go to the garage, the Tesla will automatically open for Chris's son to get in to go to school. And I need this automation because my kids are always running out to the garage and trying to get in, but they can't, they have to wait for me. So I'm gonna steal this automation. So this water kettle, it used to be just a normal water kettle until Chris got a hold of it and made it smart. And what he did, it's pretty crazy. So we took a standard off the shelf water kettle, added an ESP32 chip in there, loaded ESP home onto it, and wrote a script to have it set my temperature when I ask it to. Yeah, and now he can use his watch to control it. Chris also has it tied to a few other automations like his morning shower. Genius. All right, that about does it for the tour. But I just wanna say I love what Chris and Jan have been able to do here. They've been able to take all the data from those really interesting sensors and have been able to make actionable automations that have been able to improve their lives. So they're not just annoying things just for the sake of doing them. So I love what they've been able to do. All right, thanks for watching. This was my last tour I filmed in Georgia and I had so much fun. Definitely go check out the other tours if you haven't seen them already. And if you have a smart home you want me to tour, fill out the form link below.